If you've struggled with dynamic blocks, you've come to the right place, because today we're going to go and do dynamic blocks. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open your drawing, and you're going to want to make your block. If you've already made your block, we're going to go to the block editor. If you haven't already, select your block, type in B edit. So type in B edit if you already have a block, and this will bring you to the block editor. Select your block and get in there, and we'll be there in a second. For those of you who need to get into the block editor and don't have a block already, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select your block, type in block, press enter, name your block. I'm going to call it table set 2 because I already have one. I'm going to select my insertion point. It'll be down there. I'm going to select open in block editor. Make sure that's checked. Once that's done, click OK. Once you get into this section, this is where the real magic happens, and this is where we deal with the dynamic parameters of the block. I'm not going to spend too much time describing what dynamic blocks are. Um, I'll just give you the short version and their blocks that can be adjusted within constraints to match different parameters in your drawing. So what that means is, well, we're going to show you what that means. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to go up here and go to parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this table. So click linear and then go to the edge of your table or whatever you've got. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna go you know relatively close and we're gonna go here click that bring it up put it where you want it to be and then that will be your distance so what you're gonna want to do then is you're gonna want to tie the distance to an action so what we do is we we click on our distance um, and then we go down here go to value set in properties click increment distance increment make that what you want I'm gonna make mine six inches Go to your distance minimum. What's the minimum distance it can be? Um, I'm going to make it 8 inches. And then for the maximum distance that I can make this, I'm going to do 20 feet. So once that's all said and done, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on it and you're going to want to go to grip display. Once you are on this, click 1. That's You're going to need that. Once that is done, go to actions right here on the left. Click stretch, click scale, whatever we're going to do with stretch click stretch and we're going to select our parameter that we just made which is distance one we're going to click enter and then we're going to select the parameter point that is associated with this action which is right here so click this and then we're going to specify the stretch frame of our point so what we're going to want to do is we're pretty much drawing a box on where we want it to stretch so what we're going to do is we're going to go here we're going to create a little box we're going to do that and then within that, we're going to select the objects that we want to stretch. So I'm going to click all the objects in this box that I want to stretch because I'm making my table larger. Once you have done this, click Enter. And once that's done, your table should stretch. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Once that's done, close your block editor, save changes to your table set or whatever you're using, go to your block, and you're going to see you have this little... Um, triangle here what this does is it allows you to adjust the dynamic block so come here just grab it and drag it over and you're gonna see that our table is growing and you're gonna see that it can grow up until about 20 feet at which point it stops because that's the constraint I put with it now if you want it the reason you do constraints is so it doesn't get too big and it doesn't go crazy um, so I could have made it 10 feet I could have made it 15 feet you get the picture and you can do this with multiple different things so what we're going to do now is we're going to get into arraying our plate and we're going to array our seat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we're going to finish editing our block and we're going to insert an array into our plate and into our chair. So we're going to, what you're going to want to do, type in B edit into your command bar, press enter, click on table set two, click OK, and then we're going to be brought back here. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to click on array. Now I already have an array set up for this to show you what it looks like, but I'm going to run you through the steps. So one thing to note is if you do create a parameter in an action that do not work, um, or you need to get rid of it, you can come up here and you're going to see that this distance is tied to these two things. It's tied to stretching and it's tied to an array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and just delete it. And then that's all you have to do. You can also rename it. I'm not going to do that, but that's how you do that. Anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to, going to click Array, and we're going to cl click on our parameter, and then we're going to select our objects. So I've got these two objects right here. Looks like they're already selected for me. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to select the distance between the columns. So I'm starting in the middle of the plate, and I'm going to drag it over to here, because if you don't do this properly, you're going to get multiple plates and chairs showing up all over the place where you don't want them before you've even stretched it. So I'm sitting mine at a safe distance of about a foot and a half, so I'm going to click that, 
And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click Array. Once I've done that, I'm going to click Close Block Editor and I'm going to save the changes to my block. You can notice it's going to bring us back to Model Space and you're going to notice that nothing has changed. So, like last time, we're going to click on our block and we're going to click on that um, stretch tool. And you're going to notice when I stretch it that I'm getting more plates and I'm getting more chairs as I stretch it along. So at the maximum distance, I have multiple chairs, I have multiple plates, and you can do this on both sides of the table. You can do it with office chairs, whatever you want. Um, if you're working in construction for washrooms, you know, you can do it for urinals or whatever. But that's the basics of dynamic blocks. Now, one thing to notice is I'm doing this just as a quick tutorial, so you guys kind of get a hang of, kind of get the hang of it and get the gist of it. Um, but I'm going to show you one more thing. So I'm going to type in B edit, go back, and I'm going to edit my drawing. I'm going to click OK, and you're going to see you can do this with multiple different um, actions. So if you want to do something, you know, you can select your parameter. So if you want to rotate it at a certain point, you know, I select my rotation. Um, you specify the radius of the parameter, so I'm just going to go halfway up. You can specify the angle. We're just going to do 90 degrees, and we're going to select our label location, which will be there. And then what we can do is we can go and we can select the angle, and we can put an action with it. Obviously, for an angle, you're going to use rotate, so we select our parameter, and then we select our objects, which is going to be absolutely everything in this case. So I'm going to go here, select everything, and then I'm going to click enter and then I've got my angle and everything in there. If I close the block editor I'm going to save the changes and when I click on my block you're going to notice I have another space right here. So what this does is, as you guessed it, it rotates my block and that's how you can create and use dynamic blocks. One thing to notice that I'm going to tell you with the rotations is I can rotate only part of the block too as well. If I select only part of the block I just did, it, did the entire block to show you what you can do. And I think that's pretty much it for dynamic blocks. So again, if you guys like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you didn't like the video, you know, sorry, I tried my best. Um, but if you need more help, please feel free to leave us a comment. We always try to help in the comments. If you go to the other videos we've made and you have questions and, um, you know, there's there is comments in there and we've tried to help as many people as possible in the comments. Uh, one thing to note is we will be having an AutoCAD course coming out soon in the new year. Um, well, later in the new year, it is the new year. Uh, and it's going to be covering everything in AutoCAD from two-dimensional design to 3D modeling. Absolutely everything is going to be included in that course. Um, we're still finalizing everything, but if you'd like to be a part of that, please send us an email and uh, we'll give you a discount for helping us out to see what you would want in the course. Um, so. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video, and hopefully this brought you a lot of, you know, well, hopefully it brought you a lot of knowledge. Hopefully it brought you a lot of insight, um, and we'll see you next week in next week's video. And again, thanks so much. Until next time, see you later.